Sarve Veda Yutpada Mamananti Tapangsi Sarvani Chayad Vadanti Yadit Chanto Brahmacharyang Charanti Tate Padang Sangrahena Bravim Yomitye Tat I tell you briefly of that goal which all the Vedas propound with one voice, which all the austerities speak of, and wishing for which people practice Brahmacharya. It is this, Aum Shankaracharya's Tika. Yat Padam, that attainable thing, the goal which Sarve Veda. All the Vedas, without divergence, amananti, propound, cha, and, yat, that which, sarvani tapangsi, all the austerities, vadanti, speak of, are meant for the attainment of, yat it chantaha, wishing for which, charanti, they practice, brahmacharyam, Brahmacharya that consists either in residence for study in the house of the teacher or is some other kind, that is, lifelong celibacy meant for the attainment of Brahman. Bravimi, I tell, te, you, sangrahena, in brief, tat, that thing, the goal, omitye tat, is this, Aum. The goal that you desire to know is this that is indicated by the word Aum and that has Aum as its symbol. Etadhyevaksharang Brahma, Etadhyevaksharang Param, Etadhyevaksharang Gnatva. Yo This letter, Aum, indeed, is the inferior Brahman, Hiranyagarbha, and this letter is, indeed, the supreme Brahman. Anybody who, while meditating on this letter, wants any of the two, to him comes that. Shankaracharya's Tika. Eta Deva Aksharang Brahma. This letter, Aum, indeed is the inferior Brahman, Hiranyagarbha. And Eta Deva Aksharang Parang. This letter, Aum, is the supreme Brahman. For of them both, this letter, Aum, is the symbol. Nyatva, while worshipping, etat eva aksharam, this very letter, Aum, as Brahman, anything that, whether the supreme or the inferior Brahman, yaha, anybody, itchati, wishes for, tatasya, that becomes his. If it is the supreme Brahman that he desires, it becomes knowable. If it is the inferior Brahman, it becomes attainable. Namaste. So here is death singing the praises of Aum. Now we've encountered Aum before in our series on the Mandukya Upanishad, which explains in great detail the meaning and significance of Aum, its five parts, and so on. So I encourage you to go watch that and get the details on Aum. Here, it's important to know that Aum is a signifier for both the superior and the inferior Brahman. He says at the end of the Tika, since Aum is the name and symbol of Brahman, the goal that you desire to know is this, that is indicated by the word Aum, and that has Aum as its symbol, meaning the, the symbol Aum. 
And here is a footnote, which is probably from uh, another commentator on the same Upanishad. It is well known that the thing that is revealed, that is, flashes in the mind on the utterance of a word, is signified by that word. Thus, the knowledge, untouched by outer objects, that reveals itself to the man of concentrated mind on the utterance of the word Aum, is also dependent on and signified by Aum. One should meditate thus, I am Brahman as signified by Aum, and as conditioned by Maya, in which the sattva quality predominates. If, however, one is not able to do so, one should superimpose the idea of Brahman on the symbol Aum. The best minds can think of Brahman without Aum. The middle ones can meditate on Brahman with the help of Aum, and the inferior ones can worship Brahman on the symbol Aum. Oh. So this is giving three methods of attaining by worship of Aum, contemplation of Aum, meditation on Aum. And so the inferior or the Kanishta Adhikari, the beginner, has to worship Aum as a symbol of Brahman. In other words, you take the Aum symbol, literally, and offer puja to it, make offerings to it, pray to it, uh, just like you would a deity. And of course, this is karma yoga, right? And then the more advanced stage is that one contemplates Aum as either the superior or inferior Brahman, depending on which one he's aiming for. And uh, that's bhakti yoga. And finally, the advanced one, the Tivra Adhikari, as Ramana Maharshi would call it, is meditating on Aum. That means Aum, not just the symbol Aum, but the transcendental sound vibration Aum becomes the object of his meditation. This is because Aum is transcendental. As it says in that note, the letter or the symbol of the thing brings the thing itself into the mind when it is contemplated, when it is meditated on, when it becomes the object of worship. So any of these three methods of worship of Aum brings the result, either the superior or inferior Brahman. It's very interesting that in verse 16, he identifies the inferior Brahman as Hiranyagarbha. Hiranyagarbha, thus, is equivalent to Maya or Shakti. So, by meditating on Brahman in either the Nirguna or Saguna form, one brings Brahman close to him by using the word Aum. This Aum is very powerful. And, I mean, uh, right now I could put up 20 quotes <laughs> from the books I have right here on my little tablet that glorify and describe Aum as the Supreme itself. Uh, and this is because the symbol of the thing, as noted uh, in the footnote there, the symbol brings the reality of the thing into the mind. And since Aum, Brahman, is perceived by the intelligence, resides in the mind or the intelligence, as verse 13 talked about, that means one can meditate or actually realize Brahman in one's own intelligence. Now why is that? Because Brahman is already there. <laughs> See, there was one quote uh, one of our viewers brought up from Saundarya Lahari that one cannot realize Shakti. Well, one cannot see Shakti. And why is that? Because she's already realized, she's already seen, she's already known. 
How is that? As consciousness. Everybody is conscious, right? <laughs> I hope so. You wouldn't be watching this if you were unconscious. <laughs> so, that means Turiya, Brahman, is already realized. Everybody says, I am. Isn't it? Isn't that the root thought or the root concept of the mind? Everything is predicated on I am. I am a human being. I am incarnated here on planet Earth. I am a man or a woman or this or that. I mean, so many designations. And I am doing this. I am doing that. Uh, this is mine. Huh? Who is the person, the owner, the proprietor, <laughs> the acquirer of so many possessions? I. And I am is the fundamental concept. Without that, nothing else has any meaning. So this I am, uh, this Ramana Maharshi recommended a deep inquiry into who am I? And that doesn't mean just, you know, what is my name or what is my designation or what, you know, any surface thing. It means deep down, not only who am I, what am I? What is my actual nature? And, of course, the glib answer is to say, aham brahmasmi, you know, but to actually realize it is on a whole different level. But that's the authentic, actual self-realization. Actual realization of Brahman is an experience. An experience of being Brahman. Without identification with the various body, mind, senses, thoughts, designations, uh, possessions, and so on. One actually experiences being the all-pervading consciousness. This is true self-realization. See, this is why the Neo-Advaitans are so off-base. They say simply knowing about Brahman, maybe uh, knowing a little philosophy, of course, without referring to the scriptures, <laughs> just our own speculation. Oh, it's all one and all of this, you know. So they say that just knowing about that is self-realization. And we say, no, that's not true. That's not authentic. Because that's only vidya. That's only verbal knowledge, book learning. And book learning is insufficient. There is a shloka, we'll get to it later on, that flatly says that ordinary book learning is not sufficient for realization. So that shoots down the whole Neo-Advaita theory. And this is why they don't advocate study of the scriptures. They say, nah, you don't need to study the scriptures. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do, because the Upanishads in particular are the scriptures that contain the valid, bona fide descriptions of Brahman and how to realize it. So, you know, we don't even advocate that you should listen to our instructions, but you should go directly to the authentic scriptures and understand it for yourself. And then think about it. Contemplate it, meditate on it, and realize it for yourself. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.